Okay, so I'm going to go over how to install these manual locking hubs. Um, my truck, you can see in the background, came with auto locking hubs, and for years it's had issues of popping, not engaging, disengaging. It sounds really bad in four-wheel drive, and it's done that for a long time. Um, so I'm doing the mile marker hubs. Um, part number 104 or part number 302, one's premium, um, one's all metal, and the other one is just the basic with the plastic insert. Um, doesn't matter, same process either way. And it should be a similar process for the Warren locking hubs. Those are the other ones. Um, I did buy the Warrens. So they were more expensive. I looked at both of them and I went with this option. I got this kit for, I think after a discount, like 45 bucks versus almost 130 for the Warrens. So much better deal here. So all you're going to need is two picks, the Allen key that actually comes in the kit, snap ring pliers, and a T25 hex head to get these bolts off. Now just keep in mind that this kit only works by itself for the five bolt caps. And if you have a three bolt cap, then you'll need a conversion kit that comes in addition to the manual locking hubs. So step one is you just use a hex head to take off the bolts on the cap. And then you'll use needle nose pliers to pull out this key and a slot. There's just one key there. Just pull that out, set that aside, and then you can pull this o-ring off we don't need that anymore and then this whole hub assembly will come out um, you've just got to there's two prongs here where that key was holding them separate if you collapse them and pull them towards each other this whole hub assembly will come out squeeze them together and then the whole assembly or just about all of it should all come out in one piece The next step, there's a C-ring in here. Um, it's like pretty much half of a circle. It's pretty wide C-ring. And if you can see it moving in here, it's right behind the splines in a little groove. Um, so you've got to get that C-ring out. And the best way that i found is just apply kind of a lot of force with a pick or a flathead screwdriver. Um, you need two, you need kind of two items here. And then you can push down on either end of that C-ring. It'll take quite a bit of force, but it should fall to the bottom. There it is. The C-ring is out. And then, that will release this last piece, which is kind of like a washer in there, and that should pull out with the splines. So it's kind of aligned right here. You just kind of have to keep it in line. Um, you may have to tweak it, and you kind of you can't just pull out one side or the other. You kind of have to pull out both at the same time and just keep shifting it until it's aligned, and that should slide out. Oops. So you see how the grooves line up with the splines there. Now for install time, um, this is the mile marker packaging, the cap, and the hub come into one piece. So you can pull the cap off. Uh, when you install the cap, you're going to want to make sure it's on free. If you look here, locking it, you twist it a full turn right, and that pushes those splines up. Um, if you have the splines up, you're not going to be able to install it with a screw, so it's got to be set to free right here to install, which is how it should be out of the box. So, so the install should be pretty easy. Um, the stamped patent number goes on the back, so that goes towards the truck. Um, the inside splines right here should fit on the spindle right there. This piece should press in kind of behind the housing, so beyond flush. Um, and it's really easy from here. You're just going to need your snap ring, so use your snap ring pliers, and you'll see an obvious groove in the spindle if you come up top. So there's an obvious groove right here that these are going to fit onto. So snap ring pliers right there. If you can see that snap ring now is fit into its groove. And you can just kind of check, push around it, make sure that there's no part coming out. There should be a little bit of play. Um, and yeah, snap ring fit right there, so that'll hold the inner part in. And then the next and kind of final step of the inner hub assembly is just this. And this ring, it doesn't go, so here's your housing and then your new hub. So if you come down and look up. So this fits out on the outside of the silver part. So you can kind of push that in here. And then just keep working it around. Push that all the way in and then it's a good idea to use a flathead screwdriver or something and just there it goes it clicks just make sure it's seated all the way around it should fit in its groove as well okay so now your inner hub assembly um, is locked in so a little tip is you can use your new or your old screws and just kind of screw these guys in to the holes here just a little bit it's just to test your setup and make sure everything's locked in to screw them in and there should be some wiggle room and some play just like that um, but if you pull on it pretty good it should not come out obviously it should hit the c-ring it should hit the ring on the outside so the whole hub assembly should have some play because um, that's how it will engage but it should not come out so once you've confirmed that 
then um, next part is installing the cap. Okay, so here again, uh, make sure it's on free, make sure these prongs are not engaged, that they're as far down as they can go. Um, so if you're on free, then all you have to do really is screw it in. These screws come with a kit, and it doesn't really matter the ori orientation here. Um, just kind of get one screw started. And then you can kind of feel and slide the cap on, feel the rest. What does matter here, and what is important, is that as you tighten these screws on, um, you want to do so little by little in a star pattern. So you can hand tighten everything, and that's fine. Um, but what you'll do, once you get all the screws kind of finger tight, what you do when you get everything finger tight is use an Allen key that comes with it. Um, since it comes with an Allen key, I don't think the torque specifications are all that important or else they would have in the instructions they probably wouldn't give you an Allen key. They would have you use a torque wrench for the actual bit. So what I'm doing is just kind of screwing in one side until it's seated, not tight at all, just very like loosely hand tight, and then go to the opposite side and screw that side in. So what you don't want is to bind one side really tight and the other side's not fit in flush. So you'll kind of do that for each hole, just going in a star pattern and tightening a little more, little by little. Okay, so now last thing to do is to test it. Um, again, first you can make sure you're in free and your tire should free spin. And if you look underneath the tire, you can look at a couple different places. Um, easiest place probably is that U-joint right behind the tire. As of right now, you don't see anything moving. And then spin it a full spin all the way to the lock. And then once it's locked to make sure it's working, look at that same U-joint in there and you should see that spin. You see that U-joint spinning now? That's how you know it's going to the transfer case and the four-wheel drive hub is locked in. And then the final note is when you go back, if you notice, when you go back to free, and if you just spin the wheel forward, it will still stay engaged. So the four-wheel drive will still be engaged, the hub will still be engaged. So to unlock your hub, and you may have heard this before, you may know this, but you are gonna want with these hubs to actually put your tire in, or you put your vehicle in reverse. And if you hear that click there, that's it disengaging. And that's it.